Ever since I was a little kid, I've been obsessed with keeping freshwater fish. I find the process of taking a small group of fish and breeding them into a large number to be so fascinating, especially within the confines of a glass box. A few years ago, I started my journey with a new species of fish during a frequent visit to my local fish store. While I was having a look around at what was new, I noticed a tank with a fish priced at $500. I couldn't see the fish at first, but after asking the store owner a few questions, he lifted some driftwood to show me this expensive species. He told me these were a rare catfish known as the zebra pleco. I asked why the fish was so expensive, and he explained that it takes a long time for the fish to reach breeding size. And on top of that, by the time the fish breeds, they only have 8-10 to 10 babies at a time. And because they look cool, the demand for them is insanely high. I'd never seen a freshwater fish like this. I went home, and for the next few days, couldn't take my mind off of keeping some of these fish. A few days passed, and my fascination with these fish continued to grow. I watched countless videos on YouTube, and read every single forum post I could find. I decided I was going to buy them, but I needed more than two. So I called around to the other shops in my city, asking if they had any for sale. I called pretty much everyone, and by chance luck, a shop on the other side of town had two as well, but for $750 each. It was steep, but I decided it was worth it. So I called the original shop to let them know that I would buy the fish, but they told me they had just been sold. It might seem dramatic, but I was crushed. I felt like I'd lost my chance, and I didn't know whether this species would ever be available again. I spent the next few months searching forums, Facebook groups, and marketplace listings daily looking for a breeder of these fish. I eventually made a listing myself, saying that I'm wanting to buy these fish, and left my phone number there. About a month later, I received a text from a breeder saying they were selling some babies, and asked if I was interested in buying some. I told him that I was definitely interested, and gave him a call. We got to chatting and spent a good hour or so on the phone, talking about his setup and how he's been breeding these fish. He sent me some photos of the fish and told me he was from another city and would need to ship me the fish. There was 10 available and they wanted $450 each. By this time, I'd collected quite a bit of money in my Zebra Pleco fund. So I decided that to give myself the best chance at breeding these fish, I would take all 10. They asked me to place a deposit, as he already had some others interested, and pay the rest before he sent them. I paid the deposit, and a few days later, paid the outstanding amount, ready in time to be shipped on Monday morning. On Monday, I waited patiently to receive the notice from the breeder that he'd sent the fish. They were meant to land at lunchtime, but as the time came closer, I hadn't heard anything. I decided to give him a call, and instantly noticed that I could no longer call the number. I'd been blocked. I called my bank straight away and told them I'd been scammed, but they notified me that the money was gone and there was nothing I could do. I felt like such an idiot. I'd never been scammed before, and the last place I expected to be scammed was on a niche fish forum. I was shattered. Not only did I lose the money, but I also didn't get the fish. I ran a small investigation on this scammer myself. And with the limited information I had, I found his profile on a forum and through this was able to find some other contacts he may have scammed. I called around and was amazed to find out that it was not just me who'd been scammed. I found at least five others who'd been duped with a total amount of over $50,000. It weirdly made me feel better knowing I wasn't the only one. I reported it to the police and left it there. And over the next few months, I continued looking for a seller, and eventually found another, who this time seemed legit. I confirmed with some others in the hobby that he was for real, and ended up buying five Zebra Plecos from him. I almost couldn't believe it by the time I got them. I took them to the fish room and set them up in a grow-out tank, and got myself prepared for the long wait ahead of me. A few months later, 
I got offered a few more by the same breeder. I couldn't resist and I added another four to my colony. I grew these fish out for a few years, which takes us to where we are today. So today is a momentous day here in the fish room. I almost can't believe this. I finally got a spawn from one of the fish that I just kind of never thought I would have. So this morning I walked into the fish room and I saw in my zebra pleco tank that one of the males was actually inside the cave and I took my little flashlight, had a look in there and there was eggs. I can't honestly believe this. So I've sort of got to eat my words here. I've made a video in the past talking about breeders doing dishonest things and selling all males or all females to certain people. And I definitely have to eat my words here and say that this has not happened here with these Zebs. There's a few things that I'm just gonna note so that I can come back to this myself as a reference. But basically I've had these set up for at least a year. In this tank, there's nine zebra plecos. I'm completely unsure what the sex ratio is. I'm convinced now that it doesn't matter. I have a few different caves in here. And the thing that changed it for me this week was water changes. I actually, the other day, went back to an old video that I used to love as a kid. And that was the Eric Bodrock fish room tour with Corey. I really listened to this and there was something he talked about, he, you know, he talks about being the fish, all this sort of stuff. He talked about just doing 50% water changes every day for a week and you'll see amazing results with all your fish. And I'm here to say that this actually works. I didn't do anything special with my water. My water's about 200 parts per million hardness, so it's quite hard water. I think what happened here was with those daily water changes, it got rid of all the nitrites in the water. So I've done this for the whole system, just my pleco rack, and I instantly have seen way better results with all of my fish. Like all the quarries in here have started breeding really well. I think there might even be a spawn in my 201 tank and I've gotten a spawn out of these fish. So that was what I did every day for a week. I think it has been a week now I've done a 50% water change. The other thing too was I fed them a little bit of live blackworm. I think this might have also helped, but I think those water changes were the main trigger. What I'm gonna do, I'm like, in between two mines here because they are in the back corner of the fish room so I'm not gonna walk past this tank I'm intentionally standing away from this tank like you can see so that that male can't see me I'm probably just gonna leave these fish I'm not gonna do any more water changes I'm not gonna feed them either until those eggs hatch if that male hatches those eggs in there I'm gonna take them out but I don't want to touch them until they're hatched because I really just don't want to risk doing anything to them. I've tried pulling pleco eggs before. It just never works for me. So I'm probably going to leave them in there until then. When they hatch, I might start adding some botanicals to this tank and I might even just let those fry come out and roam the tank because I just don't want to risk it at all. These fish are very, very expensive. I couldn't give a shit about the money. All I want to do is get baby zebra plecos. Like this is a fish that I've been absolutely obsessed with for years. For this to have finally happened, I can't, I honestly cannot believe it. So each one of those eggs in there technically is worth like at least 500 bucks, but you don't really think about that stuff as a breeder. All I want to think about now is making sure I don't do anything to this tank that would disrupt that male and stop him from successfully raising these babies. So most of the time when I have a new species breed, I expect to lose the first batch. I just hope this isn't the case with these. Um, I've still got the, the original nine that I bought years ago and yeah, this has just been a long, long ride. These fish have followed me for a very long time. I've had them since babies. Yeah, very, very exciting. So I'll let you guys know how it all goes. Alrighty, well it's a week later. I'm back with good news. Our male has done a fantastic job and still has all of his eggs. They've actually hatched today and I'm going to be pulling these eggs out of the cave today. So for all you guys wondering how I did this, basically I didn't touch the tank the whole week, didn't feed the tank once, didn't change the water on it. And we also went as far as not even walking past here. So that helped a lot. And he's, you can tell he's definitely stressed out with me standing here. So today we're going to be pulling these eggs out because his job's kind of over and I 
want to follow all of the expert advice that I've gotten from my friends on how to do this from Dr. Thomas, from Aqua Malik, all those people who I look up to. And we're going to be pulling these eggs out and putting them into a breeder box. This is a DIY breeder box for plecos and we're going to be floating this in the same tank as the parents. That way the fry don't have to be transferred to a different type of water and we're just going to keep all of the parameters the same in here. I'm probably not going to change the water for the first month. I just want to get these eggs out of the cave. So I don't think I've ever been this nervous about something with fish. Like I'm so excited. Cool. All right. It's floating. I guess this is the big moment. So I hope I'm doing the right thing here. He's done a good job keeping him in there. There's our first one. There's another one. Another one. This might sound so cringy, but like this is like, honestly, a day that's been four or five years in the making. I can't believe that I'm actually getting to do this. You can see there's one there. Two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13. What we're gonna do is add a hiding space in here that they can go under and hide under. So I've got this little piece of terracotta here. It's just a crushed piece of pot that you can get anywhere. I'm just gonna put that on the floor of the box and then they'll stick to the bottom of this and it'll keep them off the floor of the box and that means their mouths will be away from where they're feeding, which is a good thing. And it'll just keep them nice and healthy because they don't wanna have things building up in here cause some harm. So we just want to keep them somewhere nice and hidden. So we go ahead and add this in. Exactly like that. We're going to also add a soaked piece of Indian almond leaf here. My friend Jason sells these. So I've been soaking this. It's just a little piece and this is going to have some biofilm on it and things that the Zebs will use in their, in their first couple of weeks to kickstart their guts. And we'll put that in. Something like that. What we're gonna do is just keep this box fastidiously clean. I'm not gonna let any crap build up in here. I'm gonna give these guys so much attention and I'll keep you guys updated over the next few days. Once I noticed the babies had used all of their yolk sacs, I decided to give them their first meal. I used this instant baby brine shrimp, as recommended to me by some of my Pleco friends. I fed a very small amount. And the babies took to it instantly. I continued to feed this to them, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. A couple weeks later, I transferred them to a new box, as my DIY Pleco box broke. Once I noticed they were putting on a bit more size, I introduced some bug buffet to their diet. This should give them all the vitamins and nutrients they need to grow and develop properly. They've all been doing fantastic, 
and I only lost one in the early regular stage, likely to a genetic deformity. But I'm here to say I'm now the proud dad of 12 baby zebra plecos, and hopefully more to come. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'm so happy to have finally reached this stage in my fish keeping journey. I'll see you guys in the next one.